Let me uh, start by saying I'm sure everybody's been following the news this morning. Uh, boy, our hearts and prayers go out to everybody in Las Vegas and everybody that was affected by that. I know our community had some people there uh, that were even at the concert. So obviously that's uh, very sad and uh, very troubling time. So our, our prayers are with everybody there. And then also, uh, obviously, uh, you know, we're all disappointed and, and uh, hurt about, uh, you know, our Lafayette PD losing one of their own last night also. Uh, just feel terrible now. Hearts and prayers are out with them also uh, moving forward as they try to get through this. But we appreciate everything they do for our community and, and putting their, their lives, unfortunately, on the line for, for our citizens. On a lighter note, I do want to uh, congratulate our, our girls' volleyball team on, man, on a big weekend. I know our football team, a lot of our guys were able to make it out to the game and really am proud of those young ladies off to a phenomenal start. So I want to wish them the best of luck. Hey, real quick, uh, moving moving forward uh, this past week, had a really, really great week. Could not be more excited about the, the attitudes of our football team right now, the way they are responding, the way they're working, the way they're uh, pushing, and uh, still they know that they've got a lot of great football ahead of them, and so it's great to see. We got a great week of practice last week. We was able to heal up. Uh, had some time off this weekend, so they was able to heal up. Uh, able to get caught back up academically when you travel a lot and, you know, missing some classes due to travel. You get to make up some tests, make up some homework. That was good to see. Then, obviously, the coaches got a chance to get out recruiting uh, this past uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So that was uh, that was really good, much needed. We got out in the Kittyana this past week also heavily recruiting and, and saw some outstanding, outstanding games. Uh, moving forward real quick to Idaho. Well, I tell you, outstanding team. Last year went eight and four, as you know. Uh, they're led by a quarterback that I think is one of the best, if not the best quarterback in the conference, in Matt Linehan. He's completing about 70% of his passes. He's, he's the third highest rated passer right now in the conference, um, doing an outstanding job. Coach's son and those coaches' sons, like I always tell you, they, they bring another dimension to the game. They're running back Dugworth. He's the leading all-purpose uh, player in the conference, number one. And so, uh, you know, the guy does it all. He's a he's a really good football player. I think he's second in rushing, but number one in all-purpose yards. And then Jacob Shannon, their receiver, second in the conference in receiving. Uh, and so they've got guys in the top of the conference in every category. And so that, you know, that that creates quite a, quite a challenge. Defensively, uh, you look at the defensive side of the ball, they're number one in this conference, number one in the Sunbelt Conference in pass defense. They've only given up two touchdown passes this entire season. And so uh, they're doing really good on the back end. One of those reasons I feel like is I think they're very sound. I think they play awfully well. They play awfully hard. Uh, and they're, you know, I think a really good defensive football team led by Tony Lashley. He's the third, he has the third highest tackles in this conference. Uh, I think he's averaging about nine a game. He's all over the field. And so, but they play awfully hard. They run to the ball and do a, do a really good job. Uh, this week, uh, injury-wise, uh, Zion Hill will have surgery. He will miss the remainder of the season. Um, gonna, uh, not not a major surgery, but just enough where he will not be back uh, for this season. But he will be back January 1st uh, when we resume off-season workouts. So, but he will miss the remainder of the season uh, due to injury. Jordan Davis uh, continues to improve. Raheem Malone is is considered right now full speed. Had a great practice last night. He was at a different speed. You can tell he had fresh legs. Grant Horst will play the rest of the season. Will never be. This is an injury that he won't be able to overcome until after the season. He's going to postpone surgery to after the season and, and fight through some things to finish up this year. So, uh, uh, but he will he will be available and, and will play. Jordan uh, will if he's not 100%. Don't know if we'll play him this week. Uh, might still play, but don't know if we'll start him. We'll know later in the week. Right now, I would say he's not quite a hundred percent. By the end of the week, he may be may be there. So we'll we won't make that call right now because we still we still have basically six days or five days before before the game. So a lot of that will have to do with how he's moving around and uh, in, in his effectiveness. So, uh, but overall, good weekend. Had a great practice last night in the stadium with the guys. Uh, th these guys are resilient. Man, they're. They're really focused. They're excited about the the next eight regular season games. Uh, you know, they realize the season is still very young, and they're ready to to, to get off to a uh, a new start. And uh, obviously, we got a tough challenge ahead of us, having to travel to Idaho.
to get that done. But they're they're excited about the challenge and uh, they're they're ready to ready to go. So any questions? If he's not 100 percent, yeah, he just, you know, we saw last week when he's just, you know, when, when he can't move, and that's one of his strong points is his mobility, and he's not able to push and move around in the pocket. Uh, he would still be available if he needed him, but uh, and I'm not saying he wouldn't play. I'm just saying he probably wouldn't get the start if he's not 100 percent. What what's what? I don't know what's so hard to figure out about that. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, yeah. Now, if for some reason he's not uh, 100%, and let's say we start Nunez and he's playing really well, may not may not need him. But uh, like I said, he this is not uh, a demotion. If he's 100%, he will be the starting quarterback uh, for for Saturday. But he's gonna have to be 100% uh, to come into that game. You know what? Uh, I'll say this. You know, the guy hadn't got a lot of uh, uh, of really live playing time. You know, with um, with the ones in a game that was his first first playing time really ever. And so for him, you could tell it took about a year and about a, a quarter and a half, I should say, to really uh, get his feet wet, get comfortable with everything. And once he did, I thought he did much better there in the. Uh, third and fourth quarter and played lights out, had zero turnovers. And that's one of the main things we're trying to do. He's no, no turnovers and he created some big explosive plays. And then the biggest play of the game, he buys time, moves moves out of the pocket and finds uh, Jamarcus Bradley for the touchdown. That showed a lot of poise and awareness to find, find him open in the end zone. Well, they, they play hard. They've got good players, one, and they play awfully hard. I think they've got a really good scheme. I think they do a good job. They were really good last year defensively, and so um, they're 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 a really good outfit for sure on that on that side of the ball. Yeah, look, a little, little bit of both. You know, I think they 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 can bring pressure, but they they they're always in the right spots. They're very sound, very disciplined, and uh, and do a, do a phenomenal job. But they can bring pressure, and um, but they've got some good players on, on the field. And uh, like I said, they do a, do a good job. Well, they like to run the football. You know, they want to run the football. Now they're gonna they're they're really good at play action, and uh, but in, and he's a very accurate thrower, and he's got a very strong arm. But with Duckworth, you know, he's averaging a you know, 100 yards a game. So they want to run the football, but I think they're a pretty balanced football team. And uh, they can hurt you with the pass just like they can the run. Well, you know, if you, we were talking about it as a staff, you know, I think it was three years ago we just uh, – I think we lost to, to La Tech and we were one in three and we ripped off seven straight wins. And so, I mean, we've been in this position before, and uh, we, you know, we didn't get off to the season to the start that we would have liked. But man, that's, this season's early, and uh, this football team is still battling. I tell you what, and we've overcome some things, and um, and our, our football team is is getting better. And uh, in a lot of areas, we're really good, but just in a lot of areas, we're not very good. But they can really are are, are focused on uh, taking it one game at a time. Climbing back into this thing, and I got a lot of confidence in these guys. They're working hard. If you saw their work ethic, if you see their attitudes right now, you would say the same thing. So I couldn't. I'm really proud of this group. I think there's a lot of great football left for these guys. You, you're talking eight, maybe nine, nine games left. That's that's almost a whole season. So we're still early in this season. A lot of great things can happen. Yeah, I don't know if necessarily I meant target Raynor is I meant target the tight ends in general. And uh, we, we definitely have tar targeted the tight ends. You know, I think um, with Chase, I think he had three catches the last game, two or three, had one big catch. And uh, we still want to continue getting him the ball. He, he's, he is that dynamic pass catcher. Uh, Raynard's a little more effective in the run game, but he's got very, very good hands. Some of the best hands on the team. But he's just a 300-pound guy running a route, you know, saying that's the – that's the difference. He's got great hands, but 
300 pound guys just don't run past you an awful lot. Where Chase has got that Chase has got that speed in order to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Stevie kicked last night, and uh, after he kicked it, I looked at him, and he looked at me, and I said, "Wow!" I said, "You're back." And, uh, and he he launched one out of the back of the end zone last night on his first kickoff attempt when we went with, with our kickoff coverage units. And uh, it, I think the time off has really helped him. He looked like his, his old self, and that was great to see. And I think that will only complement our kickoff coverage moving forward and, uh, and some of the other things. That was good to see. Well, I think just um, other teams just knowing that, that they're a viable uh, receiver or viable candidate for the ball obviously opens up everybody else. Where in the past, you know, we very seldom threw to the tight end. So now I think just the threat of the tight end getting the ball obviously adds a little bit to the, to the scheme. And um, we definitely think they're very, very capable receivers and got good hands. And so with the play action and things like that, um, we really, you know, think it's going to continue to help us. Yeah, that's a that's a big concern. You know, if you look at the Ole Miss game when they played all the way out in California, and uh, that 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 will mess with you. Luckily, our game is not real late. I'm glad it's not a six or seven o'clock their time kickoff. It's a two o'clock their time. But still, when we when we wake up in the morning, uh, our wake up call will, will be you know eight o'clock. We're here; it's really ten o'clock. So our guys are probably going to be wide awake at six. And so we're going to try to adjust our, our our meal times a little bit, our going to bed times a little bit, to account for for some of that. So it equals it out as much as we can in such a short trip. You know, it's not like we get we get to get out there a week and get acclimated to the time change, but a two hour time change is 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 a little bit. Uh, a little bit of an adjustment, um, but luckily it's not a real late kickoff. Where you, if if you kick off at seven o'clock out there, it's a nine o'clock kickoff in their in their mental clocks, and so luckily it's a two o'clock kickoff there. But in our mental and body clocks, I should say, our body clocks, it's a four o'clock kickoff, and so that's sort of like a practice time. Mm-hmm. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. Like I said, it's such a short trip. So, you know, it's only so much you can do when you when you arrive and you get there at 6 p.m. And then you kick off in less than 12 hours. So it's, it's not a lot you can do. But some of the meal times you adjust, some of the going to bed time, some of the wake up times uh, that you try to adjust to, uh, to try to accommodate them a little bit. Well, one, he knows where to go with the football night, and that's probably what you're talking about, hitting this a little bit. He, he's just an accurate passer. He's a senior. He's led his team to a bowl game last year. He's sort of a winner. Um, that intangible that he has is, is the things that you look for in a quarterback. Not only is he a talented kid, he's got those intangibles. Uh, you can tell he's a leader if you listen to some of his press conferences, especially last year how he lashed out, you know, about his, his comments about, you know, how he felt like their team deserved to stay there in, 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 uh, in FBS. And, boy, just to see him not afraid to step up and be a vocal leader, that's, that's pretty impressive. And so uh, he, he's, he'll be a challenge, especially uh, playing on his turf, playing indoors where it's no threat of weather, and, and um, he'll be able to zip that ball around. So we'll have to bring our A game, which we have not brought yet defensively. So – We'll have to find our A game pretty pretty quickly. You know, I, I hate it for them because I think they're a, a, a really good really good program. I think Paul does a, an outstanding job there. He's done a great job. He's taken that program to to a bowl game last year, eight wins to a bowl game. Uh, you know, you, you hate that that it didn't work out here in the Sun Belt Conference. You know, they're all uh, good coaches. They got good players, and uh, you know, you always hate to see a program either drop down, you know, things like that, because I think they're, they're a really good program and definitely competed in FB. It wasn't, it wasn't a deal where they couldn't compete. So, you know, I think everybody realizes that it was a deal that had more to do with conference affiliation than competition because they were, they were competing and still are competing at a very high level.
No, you know, one thing, though, he is, you know, you, you think of him as a pocket quarterback, but he's he's got some escapability, though. You know, he's mobile enough to where he's not a sitting target back there. You know, he's a big kid with a strong arm, but he's got he's got good mobility, too, and, and he knows how to work the pocket. He also you know, can run the, the enough zone read to keep you honest. I mean, he, he's, he's, a, he's a good quarterback in all facets of the game, and he'll be a guy that will get an opportunity on the, on the next level, with, without a doubt. No, oh, I don't, I don't see I don't if you talk about if, if Jordan's health regressed. Yeah, if Jordan's health regressed, it would probably be Levi Lewis. You know. Dion is still in our minds, he is still the Wildcat quarterback. He's not a full time quarterback as of yet. And uh, so Levi would if for some reason he did health regress and uh, which I don't see that, but it would be it would be Levi. Yeah. We'll not be ready yet. We'll not be ready yet. Um, we're hoping to get him back, but uh, right now we have been given no timetable with Travis because uh, of the type of injury he has. Um, it's something that it might pop up next week and be ready to go, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I think eventually if he ends up playing, it will be an injury he'll have to just to play through, sort of like Dom Jones did uh, last year and just have to, to, to play with it. Uh, but he will not play this week. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I was pumped for those guys. Got a lot of friends on their staff. Obviously, called called them up and uh, got a chance to watch some of the game. Told them, man, big high five to those guys, and gr you know, great for our conference and their first their first road win versus a Power Five in school history. Man, and they've got a you know great history of winning tradition there for sure. And so, uh, big big win on their part. And uh, but I, you know, obviously. Proud for our conference and uh, good win for our conference moving forward, and um, uh, hopefully we can we can get some more of those um, in the in the near future. What's the best thing you take and bring in here? What do you do? What do you do here? Well, one since you asked me that question, Bobby, one one thing that I did do this week, I brought in James Willis as a defensive analyst, and uh, as you know, James was our defense coordinator here for two years when we won nine games two years in a row and uh, held Nevada to three points in the bowl game. And uh, so I brought in James. He will be, uh, he will not be an on the field coach. He'll be an analyst uh, for the remainder of the season uh, and extra eyes in preparation and extra, you know, eyes on the field. And so uh, with his experience, his ideas collaborating with our, with our defensive staff, with some of the things we're trying to do moving forward uh, is already, I think already paying off some dividends. And so uh, we're excited about about that move. Excited about James being back back with us. Everybody's role stays the same. He is he is the defensive analyst. Nope, nope, no changes there. With except you know which we've already mentioned about Joe Dillon moving back to end. Looks way more comfortable there as we obviously noted that. And uh, hopefully he'll be way more productive. I um, appreciate him being willing and willing. Uh, Willing and able to, to make that move, the linebacker, but uh, it just didn't work out. And I think he's going to be way more productive, which we all know he can be uh, at the defensive end position. I've never been in the dome. I've never been in that dome. It look, looks like a nice place to play. It got, looks like they got brand new turf. Um, so it's, um, I know our kickers are excited about playing, playing in the dome. He he, been, been at home. You know, he's still under contract there with those guys. I think until next year. So, um, waiting, waiting to you know get back into the into the game, looking for that right opportunity. I have not. I hit him up. Yeah, hit him up with a tweet and everything. Uh, and boy, I tell you, that was a man. That was an exciting run. That was a classic Elijah McGuire run. Uh, we we dipped his shoulder and put his foot in the ground, made the safety miss, and showed that burst. Uh, I think big things are ahead for that guy, uh, big things. And so that was exciting to see that happen. Really pumped for him. Yeah, I, you know what, I didn't, I didn't see, uh, you know, the game or how he played. I, all I really know is he was active. Do you have any information on? 
Yeah, had a, had a pressure. Okay, but had a pressure. Um, excited for the guy. Man, he has worked hard. He has hung in there. And uh, But I'm telling you now, he is a big man that is athletic, that can move. And uh, those guys are a premium. And I think, you know, with him, I think some, some great times are ahead. And as I know, Christian Ringo, I heard, was now with Detroit, got picked up by Detroit is on the Detroit practice roster. And so um, I think I think he'll move up the uh, the ladder pretty quickly there, and we'll see Christian Ringo on the field uh, this year also.